Welcome to our excursion into the wisdom of God. So much wisdom, many dimensions. We're in Ecclesiastes. We're learning how to think right. The book of philosophical wisdom. What do you have if you don't have the kingdom of God? Well, the alternative is the kingdom of darkness. There's no in-between place. It's either one or the other. And when you have the kingdom of darkness, really what you have is chaos. And that's what we're talking about today. We're talking about the place where you dwell, the place you inhabit. Do you inhabit a place that is full of righteousness, peace and joy? Or do you live in a place of chaos or in a state of chaos? And we're looking at Ecclesiastes chapter 2 and verse 13, the B part, the second part. <clears throat> what more can the king's successor do than what has already been done? Consider what it must have felt like growing up as David's son, David the shepherd boy who became king, David the giant slayer. They wrote songs about David. Saul has slain his thousands and David his tens of thousands. And David united the 12 tribes of Israel. <clears throat> David the man after God's own heart. David the songwriter, is there nothing that this guy couldn't do? By the time that Solomon took the seat on the throne, he was well and truly in David's shadow. The trouble with a shadow is that it blocks out light. Ecclesiastes speaks to all of those who feel as though you're living in the shadows and calls you to come into the light. Because when you're in a shadow, you lose purpose and direction. You lose the meaning of life. A shadow is simultaneously a thing and nothing or no thing. <clears throat> it is a darkness. Darkness is in reality the absence of something. His father's death left Solomon with an absence. An absence can hurt more than some presence. You can do something about a presence, but really don't recover from an absence because there's nothing that you can do about it. <clears throat> Whoever has left you can have you living in their shadows for the rest of your life. And when someone who you've built a life with is suddenly absent, then the pain you receive is reflected upon as an absence of meaning. It's not just that you're lonely, but what you're feeling is an absence of meaning. Your sense of reality suffers. You no longer know what is real no longer know what your life is for. If someone leaves you, suddenly you're doubting everything and mistrusting everyone, doubting your past. Did he ever really love me? Was our history together meaningless? Doubting your present, you don't know where you are, and that's significant because meaning is associated with being in a certain place at a certain time. <clears throat> doubting your future, your ability to make right choices. That's generally manifest. This doubting your future is generally manifest, <clears throat> excuse me, is generally manifest by placing yourself in some kind of cryogenic state of numb equivocation, not wanting to make any decision, or alternatively, you make a series of rash 
decisions saying to hell with the consequences because making strong virtuous decisions is a responsibility beyond your strength because you don't have the substance that you gain when you have meaning and all of this because there is an absence in your life. So the goal is to find your place in the world. Place means more than geography. When people say he's not in a good place, they're not talking about your address. Place is a state of mind, a state of being. When somebody has an anxiety attack, the sensation they experience is one of being in the wrong place. Their skin screams, I've just got to get out of here. I've, I've got to get somewhere safe. Such torment is like being in hell. You stay awake all night but can't get out of bed in the morning. You lose all reference points. Your perception of space and time is distorted. So it feels as though time is really drawn out. It takes so long just to drink that cup of coffee because your perception of time even gets distorted. <clears throat> that seems counterintuitive, but such occasions can be the making of you. If you turn your pain and loss into an opportunity to draw near to God, he will comfort you. Comfort. Uh, parakalos in the Greek. Uh, it sounds like that word paraclete that Jesus talks about. When Jesus calls the Holy Spirit the comforter, the Holy Spirit comforts by filling all of the empty spaces in your life. And the result in filling your temporary state with an eternal state is that you receive a level of meaning that is beyond this world. That's what you need. Because everything under the sun seems meaningless. You need something beyond this world to give you meaning. This brings you to a better place. If you can receive the comfort of God, the Holy Spirit, filling all of the empty spaces with his presence, comforting you, the comforter, comforting you. By that, it means he's strengthening you. He is, it's not as though he's just going there, there, it'll be all right. This is real. This has to do with your meaning. And so from Outside of this world, God comes into your world, bringing eternal reality, eternal truth, eternal meaning, eternal presence that fills all of the empty spaces in your life and give you, gives you an, a sense of ultimate reality and ultimate meaning and ultimate purpose that is beyond, way beyond what you feel like you've lost here on earth. So this brings you to a better place because meaning has a place. It has a, what is called a meta place, a greater all encompassing place. Now, wherever you go geographically, you personally are in a good place. This is why Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God because the kingdom of God is that meta place, that bigger thing. It is the greatest place of all. And he says that this place is within you. Wow. So you can be in a different place. You might still be in the same house, but in a different place on account of the fact that the kingdom of God has come. One more thing needs to be said concerning this verse. Uh, Solomon mentions succession. David set things up so Solomon could have a successful future. In the end, everything we do finishes up in the hands of others. You lay down your life, you lay down what you've taken up, 
throughout your life, you lay it down and others will take it up. That's what your last will and testament is all about, laying down the best of your life so those following can have the best opportunity to make the best of their life. This is the meaning of Jesus' words, greater things than these shall you do. Because a leader always desires that those who follow will do greater things than he has ever done. And this gives your life great purpose. If you woke up today alive and not dead, then God has a purpose for you. No matter who's become absent from you, God has a purpose for you because you're still here. Allow God to come in and fill that empty space so that your life can have greater purpose. Think about it. Paul wrote, the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. This means that within you, there is a place of tranquility. There is a place of bliss. And there is a place of nobility that defies your circumstances and eventually will transform your surroundings. God bless you. We'll see you again tomorrow for some more wisdom from the book of Ecclesiastes.